Welcome in. You're listening to Michael Patrick Shields, radio stations across the state of Michigan, Fox 47 Television. Come on with me. We're going to go aboard Air Force One and behind closed doors at the White House. The book is called The Residence Inside the Private World of the White House. And Kate Anderson Brower has done something that uh, we all kind of dream about. Covered the White House for Bloomberg News and Business Week. And as part of the press corps, she got to travel around the United States and around the globe on Air Force One with President Obama. Also traveled with the Veep to places around the world, too. And she's on the other end of our AT&T line right this very second. We could spend a whole day talking to her, and you can spend a whole day reading her book. It's called The Residence. Thanks for being available. Thank you for having me. What is it like? i got so many things I want to ask you about. But first off, I see you went to places like Ireland and France with the president and so forth. When mm-hmm. you get on Air Force One, is, is he like behind closed doors and the press corps is in normal coach seats? Or what's it, what's it like? Well, it's really like a business class a flight. Um, mm-hmm. The press corps sits in the back and the president's up in the front. But um, the president does come to the back of the plane and talk to reporters, usually off the record. Um, and the press secretary always comes to the back of the flight, usually usually right when you're about to land. And sometimes there's turbulence and you're kind of steadying yourself with your tape recorder and your notepad out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're all mic'd up and, and, and about a dozen reporters are gathered around them in this tight little space. But it's a lot of fun. It's a really amazing experience. Hmm. Otherwise, it's just like any other business class flight? Uh, well, with uh, incredible food. Yeah, oh. <laughs> served on White House China. Um, yeah, it's gourmet food and, you know, that you can watch movies. Um, and no, it's incredible. There's a little phone. Uh, I was a Bloomberg reporter, which is one of the three wire services, and there was a little phone line between our seats. With uh, I would sit next to a Reuters reporter, and if anything really newsworthy happens, um, you would pick up this phone and call and immediately be connected to your news desk. So if a huge event happens, it has to really be important. And you would place this call to your editor, and they would get the story out right away while you were in the air, which was kind of cool. Was Ireland one of the more fun trips? I would say the coolest trip, Ireland was neat because that was, you know, President Obama was going back to visit his, you know, long relatives, yeah. you know, and people were so excited. But um, Mongolia was the coolest trip I ever took, oh. and that was with um, with Vice President Biden. And oh. I was one of three reporters on that trip, and it was just amazing access. We went to China and Japan, too, and I just <laughs> never thought I'd go to Mongolia in my lifetime. And it was really cool to see these yurts, and um, there was a cultural display for him, and it was just a, an amazing experience. Did he touch you? Uh, did he what? Did he touch you? Yeah, he is very he is very sweet. Yeah, he's very he's a really folksy. What you see is what you get. Yes. With Joe Biden? He's right yeah. out there, huh? The vice president. It- yeah, yeah, he's really, you know, he's really down to earth and what I what I saw with him. So it was fun. I can't even believe it, this, uh, the access that you've had. Now, from what I understand in the book, and I've heard this before, too, you know, there's plenty of gossip around, uh, but that the people that were liked the best by the White House staff were George and Barbara Bush, for, uh, the 41st president and the first lady. Yeah, they were by far. And, you know, these staffers are not partisan, which is interesting in Washington. Everyone's got a political bent, and they serve from administration to administration, and they love George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush. Uh, The Bushes would play horseshoes with the staff when the weather was nice. Um, Barbara Bush would wander into the flower shop and check in on the flowers, wearing her bathing suit and a bathrobe before her morning swim. Um, They were really like grandparents to these staffers. And, uh, And they were just really down to earth. They would call you at home if you had a death in the family. Um, One staffer showed me when I interviewed him an email from Barbara Bush, a recent email that was signed Love BPB, Barbara Pierce Bush. I mean, she personally emails with people, which is kind of incredible. Hmm. Uh, You know, when I got the sense when the Obamas were first elected, I watched the, on television, you know, the parade Mm -hmm. where they stay outside as long as they can, and then they take that walk from the parade reviewing stand into the White House. Uh, mm-hmm. it, for, for forever, you know, the, the pomp and circumstances yeah. over, they're going to live there now, right, for at least four years, maybe eight. And mm-hmm. I got this overwhelming feeling of this young family marching on that little walkway into the White House that's, it, that it's like, welcome to prison. This is it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very nice prison, right? The great 
white jail, uh, the Truman's called it. Um, it's really, it's a tough life. I mean, some Obama advisors told me, though, it's like a very fancy New York apartment. When you're up there, you really are alone, and that's how they feel. Um, it, the, it, Michelle Obama asked the florist to label the flowers and the flower arrangements, and one butler, Smiley St. Oban, who was from Haiti, she would ask him to speak French so her daughters could learn the language. And they grow really close to the staff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very tough place to live and I think that the staffers you know especially feel for the children who grow up there yeah because I mean you, you say you're alone but someone's out right outside the door right watching yeah. the door when right. you go to sleep there's a chance someone could come wake you up in the middle of the night that's got to be a little weirdly unsettling I would think yeah yeah and Ron Reagan told me a great story he was visiting his parents and he was arguing with his father about the Iran Contra affair and, and just as he was you know fighting with him he looked over his shoulder and a butler had a plate of cookies and he, he was like, God, I just can't believe I'm saying this, and this butler is listening in on this conversation. And his parents said, it's fine. You know, they'll never say anything. So, I mean, it would be unbearable to live in the White House if you thought current staffers were going to talk about you. Um, and, and all these staffers, even when they were saying negative things, it was still in a positive light. They really try to, to, to paint the, these stories in as positive a light as possible. Except for Hillary Clinton calling her husband a a bastard and right in front yeah. of everyone, right, and throwing a yeah. phone at him or something? Right. I mean, she, you know, this uh, one florist told me on the record, and most of these interviews were on the record, um, he said he was changing out the flower arrangements, and he heard them fighting, and he heard um, a heavy objects being thrown. And, um, you know, but I, I, I think a lot of the staffers really felt for her. You know, she, one of them told me it happened, the Lewinsky affair. She knew it happened, and everyone was staring at her. It was a really awkward, terrible time. And the second and third floors, there just wasn't as much laughter as there used to be one maid told me, and they felt really badly for Chelsea Clinton, but um, they also were kind of cheering Hillary Clinton on because she had the president sleeping on the sofa in the sitting room attached to their uh, bedroom for a few months in 1998, and, and they thought, you know, he deserved it. Mm. How do you feel being the star now going on all these talk shows? Oh, God, it's fun because I used to be on the other side of it, and it's cool. I mean, it's different. I am so happy that people like this book because I really do think that it pays tribute to, to kind of unsung heroes in our democracy, and this is like the real-life Downton Abbey, and these are the maids and the butlers that make this place tick. What's the biggest show you've been on so far? Oh, God, I did the Today Show. And that was really cool. I did a package for them, um, and when they spoke with one of the butlers, James Jeffries, nine members of his family worked at the White House, and that was the day the book was released on April 7th, and that was, uh, that was really neat. You think you can get on MSNBC? You got a shot at that, maybe? Oh, yeah. No, I did it last night, and I've done uh, Hannity and on Fox, and I mean, it's been Megyn Kelly on Fox and mm -hmm. uh, Hardball with Chris Matthews and stuff. It's been a whirlwind, and I'm just happy that people are, are reading this book and like it you know it's fun it's called the residence and it's been fun talking to you thank you i can't wait to dig into it even more <laughs> thank you so much travel safely her husband is an executive producer there at msnbc that's why i joked about that there but kate anderson brower the book is called the residence and yeah there's monica Lewinsky stuff in there yeah there is uh president johnson who was obsessed with the white house plumbing there is the nixon resignation the Carter's devastation after losing, Nancy Reagan's screaming fit, Clinton's paranoia, pot smoking in the White House, too. If you check it out, you'll be able to read it all. It's called The Residence, and it'll take you on board Air Force One and behind closed doors at the White Jail, the White House. It's Michael Patrick Shields, MIBigShow.com, through the AT&T microphones and presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan and Blue Care Network.